Welcome back, everybody, to the Cleveland Guardians franchise here on MLB The Show 22. We are currently 5-5 five and five here through the first 10 games in year number two. It's been a pretty fun start to the season. Last episode, we had our opening day, which we dominated the Oakland Athletics 13-3. And then we pitched in one of our better prospect, Gavin Williams' major league debut. Williams was great. Six innings, one earned run. But unfortunately, we ended up losing to the Twins 5-1 because the offense didn't really show up. Williams is in the rotation with the injury of Edward Alzale, who we acquired in the offseason to be our fifth starter. But for the next month or two, he will be on the injured list. Obviously, it's way too early to make any sort of conclusions about really anybody through 10 games of the year. So all I can really say is Jose Ramirez is very good at baseball. He already has five home runs. A lot of our good players are doing pretty well. Bieber's been pitching at a high level. Classe is doing well. But 10 games in, we can't really make any conclusions about anybody. So today, we're going to play two games, both on the road. One in Detroit, one in Colorado. I wanted to make it a point to go out to Coors Field to play them. But before that, we have our first trade of the season, and it's kind of a significant one. We're going to be trading away third base prospect Nolan Jones, who's one of the better prospects in our organization. But he just hasn't really progressed all that much since the start of the series. He struggled in spring training, and a team who really needs a third baseman is the Miami Marlins. They have Brian Anderson, who's a free agent at the end of the year, and they don't really have any good prospects at third base. They are loaded in pitching prospects, however, and they don't need all these guys. They have a number of really young pieces at the top of their rotation, like Trevor Rogers, Pablo Lopez, Sandy Alcantara. They don't need all of these prospects down here, and maybe they may be willing to give one up. Alex Cisneros is certainly not going to be available for them. He was their first round pick last year, 97 potential, probably the best player in the entire draft class. Max Meyer is another good option, but we had him last year in our Orioles franchise. So that sort of narrows it down to two. The first one is Yuri Perez. Sky high ceiling, and that's not the only sky high thing about him as he stands at six foot eight. Only 19 years old, 67 overall. I really like what he brings to the table. And there's also Edward Cabrera. Cabrera is a little bit worse than Perez. He's also five years older, but he does have a potential. Personally, the one that I think would make more sense in a trade is Edward Cabrera, and they would be willing to do this straight up. Nolan Jones for Cabrera. I get the value looks like a fleece in favor of us, but you also have to keep in mind the Marlins are loaded in pitchers, but they need third base, so the trade makes sense for both parties. Edward Cabrera is somebody who I think has a ton of upside. He hasn't really developed as quickly as the Marlins would have hoped. Sort of similar to us and Nolan Jones. So I think it's a fair trade for both sides. Cabrera and Jones get a new start. And we get a legit, a potential pitching prospect. We're going to simulate this game against the Tigers because that's the game Shane Bieber is pitching. And if you remember from last year, Bieber owns the Tigers. In his last four starts against Detroit last year, he pitched a combined 36 and two-thirds innings, which, to put it into perspective, four major league games is 36 innings. And he only allowed one run in those 36 and two-thirds innings. So we go three and two in the five games we simulated. The offense is showing no signs of consistency. We had two games of at least nine runs. The other games, we scored two or less. So at least the offense is having good moments, whereas last year, there were just too many games where we consistently scored under four runs. So here we go at Comerica Park, the third game of a four-game set in the Motor City against the Detroit Tigers, who were very good last year. This year, not so much. They currently find themselves at the bottom of the division. Everybody's wearing number 42. It is Jackie Robinson Day. I didn't even realize it was Jackie Robinson Day when I picked this game out, so that's another fun added bonus to this matchup as well. Along with that, Shane Bieber gets to take on the team that he owns. Well, he owns them more than Chris Illich because the Illich family refuses to spend any sort of money, and as a Tigers fan, I can attest to that. The veteran right-hander Michael Pineda is starting today for Detroit in two starts. He has a 2.08 ERA, pitching pretty darn well so far. We're going to start this one early in the top of the first inning. It's Cattell Marte up, lines that one into the opposite field, likely for extra bases. Marte rounded first, headed to second for a double into the left center field corner. So the Guardians open up the game of a runner here on scoring position and a great opportunity for the meat of the order to drive them in. That starts with Jose Ramirez, who draws a walk. So now Cleveland is a pair of runners aboard with one out. That'll bring up the cleanup hitter, Fran Mil Reyes, who's gotten off to a slow start this year, only hitting 167. That's not going to go any higher as he swings and misses at the high fastball up in the zone. 
We move to the bottom of the first. Shane Bieber gets to take on his favorite team for the first time this year as the leadoff man, Victor Reyes, singles into right field, so not the best of starts. Reyes would make it to third with one away. Spencer Torkelson, the former number one draft pick, strikes out. Tigers don't score. Into the second inning, Elliot Ramos leads it off. A grounder to short, but the throw is offline, and that'll be an error. And Ramos reaches first successfully. The error called on Javier Baez. With one away, it's Ahmed Rosario. Goes down on the slider. Both teams are getting base runners early, but they're not doing anything with these base runners. Alex Dickerson up in the bottom of the second. Lines it into right for a base hit. So far, the lefties in this lineup are doing pretty well early on here against Shane Bieber. That'll bring up another lefty, Willie Castro. He draws a walk. With one away, the Tigers have loaded the bases. They're in prime positioning to drive in some runs. Two gone now for Reyes. Grounds it to first. Bell deflects it with his body. Going to be a close play at the bag. They call him out. The Tigers lead the bases loaded. Not a perfect start by any stretch for Shane Bieber, but he has not allowed any runs yet. Still tied at zero. Into the third. Straw deflects that one off of Pineda's back, and it'll go for an infield single. That one's got to leave a mark. Pineda certainly shaken up, but he's going to stick this one out. That'll bring up Fran Mill Reyes with two away. Hit this one high and sort of deep into right center field. It will be caught on the play by Riley Green. Three scoreless frames thus far for Pineda. Neither team on the board yet. We move to the top of the fourth. Josh Bell leading things off for Cleveland. He lines this one into right field, and that one barely goes over the fence. A solo home run for Josh Bell and the Guardians of the first ones on the board. That one will be Bell's fourth on the year, 366 feet. That one did not need to go very high in the air. He just hit that one super hard. So the Guardians now lead this game one to nothing. Great swing there by Bell as we go to the following batter, Elliot Ramos, who's had a good start to the year. Hits that one over the head of Michael Pineda for a single. Ramos has gone deep three times this season, but he also only has three RBIs. It doesn't seem like he does super well with runners on base, or at least not yet. Stephen Kwan singles into right field, so after a slow start, it appears the Cleveland offense has woken up in a major way as they look to add some more runs onto the board. That'll bring up Ahmed Rosario, who's gotten off to a slow start this season, looking to pick things up here. He's going to hit this one into left field. That goes for a single, and the bases are now loaded as Ramos chooses to hold up at third. The first four batters have reached safely in this inning. That brings up Omar Narvaez, who lifts this one into center. Nearly goes to the warning track as it's caught by Green. Ramos advances to home safely. Stephen Kwan gets to third. So the sack fly by Narvaez will put Cleveland up two to nothing. That'll bring up the leadoff man, Miles Straw. Grumps this one into left field for a hit. Run scores, and it's now 3 to nothing. as the Cleveland lineup is really dominating Pineda, who's already at 82 pitches, and he's had three scoreless innings. To put that into perspective, Cattell Marte grounds into a 6-4-3 double play. That'll end the fourth inning. Very productive frame for the Guardians as they drive in 3 and lead this game 3 nothing, but not for long. Runner on first, one away for Jamer Candelario, who homers into right center field. And the Tigers bring you within one just like that. Shane Bieber, in those 36 and two-thirds innings he pitched against Detroit last year, only allowed one run. That play alone allows two runs. So the Tigers have it within one, but they're not done. Willie Castro hits this one to the corner in the left field. That one looks like it'll go for a double. Still only one away, by the way, as the Tigers have a runner in scoring position looking to tie this one up at three. We'll see if they can do it. Runner on third for Reyes, two away. He goes down on the knuckle curve. Nice pitch by Bieber. Good inning for both offenses as it is a 3-2 ball game. Very interesting fourth inning after nobody scored in the first three. Tariq Skubal is in for Detroit here in the fifth. I'm not sure why they are using him in the bullpen, but whatever, beyond me. So Jose Ramirez strikes out. The throw from the catcher, Haas, goes over the first baseman's glove. Ramirez thinks about it, stays at first, but the throw from right is way off, so he's going to make it all the way to second. So that's going to be a strikeout, but Ramirez gets two bases off of two errors, one by the catcher and one by the right fielder. The Guardians will drive him in off of the base hit into left field by Josh Bell, his second RBI of the game, 
And it's now 4-2. to two. That run will not be earned against Tariq Skubal. Bottom five, Spencer Torkelson singles into left field. So with one away, Torque is aboard. We'll see if the Tigers can try to dig into this two-run deficit. Alex Dickerson is up. Grounds that one past Josh Bell for a hit. Dickerson has gotten off to a strong start today. Three for three with a trio of singles. Beaver's pitch count starting to get up there. It's at 92 as he gets scope to go down looking. Five innings, two earned runs for Beaver. That'll do it for his game. Not bad by any stretch, but certainly not a dominant outing either. We move to the bottom of the sixth. The lefty, Alex Vessia, is in for the Guardians. He has not allowed a run in three outings, four innings, doing pretty well. The big acquisition from the Dodgers, making it through the bottom of the sixth as he strikes out Willie Castro, who reached base on his first two at-bats. Into the seventh inning now, Jose Cisnero is in for Detroit. He has not gotten off to as good of a start in 2.2 innings. He has an ERA of 13.5. With one away, Reyes hits it high and deep to the track. But it is caught out in right. That one off the bat looked like it had a chance to be a home run. That would be a home run in a majority of Major League Parks, but not here at Comerica. As Josh Bell goes down looking on the fastball. Good inning from Cisnero. Bell does not like the call. He had some choice words for the umpire. Thessia makes it through the bottom of the seventh, striking out Spencer Torkelson. Game remains 4-2 to two as we go to the bottom of the eighth. Nick Sandlin is in for Cleveland. He's been solid so far, allowing two runs in five and a third innings as Javier Baez leads the inning off. Grounds that one past the glove of Sandlin for a base hit into center. Tying run is at the plate. A big opportunity here for Detroit to get back into this game, and that they would do. Alex Dickerson with a high fly ball into right. You can't forget about it as that one nearly reaches the second deck. Two-run homer for Dickerson, his first of the year, and we are tied up at four. What a game for Alex Dickerson. Four for four, including a two-run homer to tie it up here in the bottom of the eighth. Clutch hitting there by Detroit. Two away now for Willie Castro. Sandlin with his 26th pitch will finally get out of the inning there. A big swing for Dickerson, and now is anybody's game entering the ninth inning. Miles Straw leads it off. The top of the order opening up the inning for Cleveland as he draws a walk. Chris Martin, the lefty, is on the bump here for the Tigers as he faces off against the lefty killer, Ketel Marte, who gets that one of a warning track, but it is caught. Nearly a home run for Marte, but again, it is Comerica Park after all. Jose Ramirez with one away gets that by Torkelson for a base hit. So now there's two runners on with one away. A big at bat here for the Franimo. Franimo Reyes, who's 0 for 4 today, lines that one high. And deep in a right center field. Go ball, go, it's gone! A three-run shot for the Franimo. Fran Mill Reyes and the Cleveland Guardians take the lead 7-4. Cleveland right back on top. A clutch home run by Reyes. The dugout is fired up. Manager Giovanni Cabrera giving everybody high fives and hugs. Fran Mill Reyes pumped up with one of his biggest home runs as a Guardian. And that really could not have come at a better time. A.J. Hinch does not look as pleased in the opposing Detroit dugout as Cleveland is fired up. You can tell they want to win this game. Let's take another look at maybe the biggest home run of Season 2 so far. Just an absolute beauty off the bat of Fran Mill Reyes. Into the bottom of the ninth, Emmanuel Classe, arguably the best reliever in baseball, looking for the save. Five for six and save opportunities so far this season is with one away. Ooh, that pitch is filthy. Gets Reyes to go down on the way outside Carter. That one didn't really look like a strike, to be honest, but we're not going to complain. Then with two away, Riley Green flies this one into right. Naylor under it, and the Cleveland Guardians win an exciting one. 7-4, a big win within the division as the Guardians improve to 9-7 and seven on the young season here on Jackie Robinson Day. This was kind of a weird game in the sense that our pitching wasn't outstanding, our offense wasn't outstanding, but they did more than enough to help us win the game. Seven runs, ten hits. We obviously had two home runs, including the big one in the ninth inning by Fran Mill Reyes to drive in three runs. Shane Bieber was fine. The win actually goes to Nick Sandlin, who allowed two runs in one inning. So the one pitcher who didn't do well gets the win. Detroit with four runs, nine hits, three errors. However, their defense was not very good, and those errors did lead to runs. 
So we're going to simulate our next two weeks. We're going to wrap up this Detroit series, then three games against Boston, Arizona, and Kansas City. We ended up winning all three series. So we beat Detroit, won two of three against Boston, two of three against Arizona, two of three against KC. The reason why we're six games over 500 is the starting pitching. Everybody's doing well right now. It's kind of absurd. Our offense has been average, but our pitching has been amongst the best in baseball. So we stand at 16 and 10. We're going to play this first game in Colorado against the 13 and 12 Colorado Rockies, who, like us, have exceeded expectations through the first months of the season. These are two of the more surprisingly good teams so far in baseball, battling it out here at a three game series in Coors Field. We just played at the most pitcher friendly park in baseball. Now we're playing at the most hitter friendly park in baseball, which should be a lot of fun. Here's a look at both lineups. Starting today for the Rockies will be their ace, Freddy Peralta. They gave a lot to get him in the offseason, including Irvine Marquez, top prospect Zach Veen, and another really good prospect in Michael Taglia. That's a lot for a really good pitcher, albeit in Peralta, as he walks Cattell Marte early. That'll bring up Jose Ramirez, who has cooled off a little bit, but has still been very, very good. Hits this one high and deep into the right center field gap, and it has enough carry. That'll be a home run. A two-run shot for Jose Ramirez, his ninth home run of the year. And the Guardians put up two early here in the first inning, a 428-foot home run as it's 2-0. Aaron Savale is starting for Cleveland in a star-studded rotation. He's been arguably Cleveland's best starter so far, which says a lot. 2.25 ERA, .89 whip in five starts. He has been fantastic so far. Facing off against Robbie Grossman, who they signed in the offseason. He will draw a walk. So Grossman is aboard with two away here for Randall Gritchick, who strikes out at the inside curveball. Nice pitch there by Savale to get through the inning. Good start here early. Cleveland leads 2-0. The catcher, Victor Caratini, hitting 313 on the year. He has hit the ball excellently to begin this season. We'll shoot that one into the gap for a double. So if nobody out, Cleveland is a runner in scoring position. So far, so good for the Guardian offense here at Coors Field. That'll bring up Andres Jimenez, who's also gotten off to a nice start this season. Draws a walk. So now there's two on, two away. A big at bat here for Cattell Marte. Drew a walk to open up the game, which obviously led to a run. And he goes down swinging on the fastball. So the Guardians leave two aboard. Good way to get out of the inning there for Peralta. CJ Crone is up here in the bottom of the second. Hits that one nicely into right center field. Ramos reacts to it slowly. Would have been a double if CJ Crone was fast, but he is not fast. Still a single for Crone, and there's nobody out. Now one away for Garrett Hampson, who is fast. He hits that one high and deep into left center. It goes off the wall. That one's going to be an extra base hit for Hampson. Crone stays at third. So the Rockies now have a pair of runners in scoring position with only one away. Base hit probably drives in two here, but Elias Diaz is going to say, who needs a base hit when you can hit maybe a dinger? It's going to be close, and it is gone. Straight away center field, a three-run home run for the catcher, Elias Diaz, his second of the year. And the Rockies lead this game 3-2. to two. Savale frustrated there, a big swing for Diaz. So after scoring two in the first inning, Cleveland gets one-upped. 3-2 to two here in the third, Josh Bell strikes out. Freddy Peralta really getting into a groove. Outside of the few hits Cleveland has gotten, they have not been able to put the ball in play. Almost all of Peralta's outs have been exclusively strikeouts as he walks Fernando Reyes. That'll bring up Miles Straw. Goes down looking on the fastball. Through three innings, Peralta has eight strikeouts so far. Wheeling and dealing, we move to the bottom of the third. Robbie Grossman singles into center field. He has reached base twice today with a walk and a base hit. Nobody out. The sweet spot of the order is due up. Colorado has a nice opportunity to possibly extend this lead. The big free agent signing Chris Bryant is up as Grossman steals second. Caratini can't even get rid of it. So now Grossman with his fifth stolen base is in scoring position. For Bryant, he draws a walk. That was a close call. Kind of looked like it was in the zone from that angle, but the umpire will say that's not a strike. Randall Gritchick then draws a walk, so the bases are loaded with nobody out. Savale is really starting to struggle now. C.J. Crone is up. Grounds this one to short. Looks like it'll be a double play. Run does score. 
So Cleveland turns two. Colorado drives one across. It's now four to two. All things considered, though, the bases loaded and nobody out. That's not the worst case scenario for Cleveland, only allowing one run. Elliot Ramos strikes out. Peralta strikes out the side there in the fourth. He has 11 Ks through four innings. Slow start for Peralta, but he's really starting to pitch well. Savale also of a strong inning. He gets Connor Joe to go down looking. That'll end Savale's day. Four innings, four earned. Not his best outing. But the Rockies would actually make a pitching change of their own, which really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. It's Justice Sheffield who enters the game for Colorado. He's pitched really well this year. But Freddie Peralta was really pitching at a high level. I don't know why they didn't stick with him for another inning or two. Peralta hadn't allowed a run since the first inning, and he's struck out 11 batters since the game started. Cattell Marte singles into center, an especially bold strategy putting up a lefty with Cattell Marte hitting. Marte makes him pay. That'll bring up Josh Bell. He had a home run from the left side of the plate in this episode, trying to do so from the right side of the plate as well. He won't. But he singles into right field. So now there's two runners on and two out. A big opportunity here for the Fran Mill. Fran Mill Reyes, who has reached base twice so far today. 1-1 one, one pitch. Grounds this one up the middle. That one will go for a base hit. One run will score. Bell advances to third. It's an RBI single for Fran Mill Reyes. And it's now 4-3. to three. I think the Rockies are currently regretting replacing Freddie Peralta. Now Miles Straw is up, full count, draws a walk on the outside slider, so the bases are now loaded. A huge opportunity for the catcher, Victor Caratini, and it looks like he might capitalize. High and deep in a right center, that one will drop in front of a wall. One run scores, two scores, Straw will be safe at home as well. A bases clearing double for Victor Caratini, who drives in three runs. His second double of the season, his second double of the game, and it's now a 6-4 score. Justice Sheffield doesn't even make it out of the inning as he'll be replaced by Four Eyes himself, Ryan Nelson. Nelson's going to face off against Josh Naylor here, 2-2 pitch. Naylor got a little trigger happy. That pitch was way inside, still swings. But a good inning as the Guardians score four, courteous of a three-run double by Victor Caratini. Keenan Middleton is in for Cleveland here in the bottom of the fifth. He has not pitched a lot. Only two and two-thirds innings so far this year, but he hasn't allowed a run, pitching at a high level. Leading off the inning is Tim Anderson, who was signed to a nice contract from the White Sox in the offseason, singles it into right. Thank you, Colorado, for taking him out of our division because, quite frankly, he's a really good player. Robbie Grossman also just taken out of the AL Central. He was with Detroit last year, singles into left. So the leadoff batters are aboard. A big opportunity here for Randall Gritchick, and he will capitalize. No doubt about it. A three-run moonshot into left center field, and the Rockies are right back on top as it's now 7-6. Huge home run for Gritchick, his sixth of the year, 428 feet. So after scoring four in the top half of the inning, the Rockies answer with three of their own and take the lead right back as C.J. Crone singles into right. Keenan Middleton is really struggling, and at this point, the Guardians say, we got to take him out of the game. So that's what they're going to do. Camilo Duvall will replace him. Duvall acquired in an offseason trade with the Giants, and he's pitching really well so far this year. 2.25 ERA in 16 innings. With two away, it's Garrett Hampson. Flies this one into left. Looks like it should end the inning, but it won't. Miles Straw decided not to hustle to it. Straw's a guy known for his hustle. That's a really surprising play, and that would make them pay as Elias Diaz rips it into right field over the head of Josh Naylor. One run scores. Two will score. It's a two-run double for Elias Diaz, and it's now 6-9. to nine. Nice. That play was so easily preventable, all because Straw didn't hustle. So manager Giovanni Cabrera is going to make an example out of him, replacing him with Stephen Kwan. So Straw's day is done. Inning comes to a close as Connor Joe strikes out. A very eventful fifth inning. The Guardians score four. The Rockies score five. Colorado up six to nine. Into the sixth inning, Ryan Nelson still on the mound as he gets Elliot Ramos to draw a walk. An 11 pitch at bat to open up the inning for Elliot Ramos, and it finishes with a walk. That'll bring up Cattell Marte, who hits it high and deep in a right field. Go ball, go, it's gone! Two-run shot for Cattell Marte, and the Guardians have it within one. 
A total slugfest here at Coors Field. Marte's third home run of the year, and it is now 9-8. to eight. Look at this awesome angle. Shout out to MLB The Show. Just a completely sick camera view and an awesome home run for Cattell Marte, the $80 million man. Two away now for Josh Bell. Lines it nicely into center field, and the play will not be made. Bell rounding first, headed to second. He thinks about going three, makes a bad decision. Heads back to two. What is happening? The second baseman bobbles it. The throw to third is offline. So Josh Bell's going to get a triple after all. One of the weirder plays you'll ever see. If Bell had kept going, that could have been an inside the park home run. Not that it's necessarily his fault, but still, what a weird play. Fred Mill Reyes is up. He has gotten on successfully in all three of his at-bats. Doesn't make it four in a row as he lines out to right. Still a good inning. Cleveland brings the deficit within one. The veteran lefty, Jose Alvarez, is in for Cleveland. Eight innings, three earned runs so far. He's been pretty productive, and he will make it through the six with no problem as he strikes out Randall Gritchick. 9-8 remains your score. We're going to hop right into the eighth inning now. No score change. The former Met, Seth Lugo, is in for Colorado as he faces off against Cattell Marte with two away. Marte gets that one over the glove of Tim Anderson, likely for extra bases. A very productive day in the office here for Cattell Marte. Three for four, a walk, a two-run homer. He has scored multiple times. We'll see if he can be driven in here again by Jose Ramirez, who hasn't done anything since the homer in the first. Lines it over to first base. C.J. Crone tags the bag. So it still remains 9-8 as we go into the bottom half of the inning. For what it's worth, James Karinchak pitched the seventh for Cleveland, and he pitched quite well, not allowing any runs. Here in the eighth, it's Alex Vesia in as he strikes out Elias Diaz. Diaz has had a very productive day for Colorado, driving in five of their nine runs. Connor Joe is now up. He's going to single it into left field, so the Rockies put themselves with another runner aboard as they look to possibly extend this lead. One run is not enough insurance, especially here at Coors Field. So what are they going to do? They are going to increase the lead. Tim Anderson doubles into right center field. The throw at the plate, it's going to be close. Not in time. Connor Joe is safe. And the Rockies now lead this one 10-8 as Anderson is fired up. David Bednar is in for the save. It would be his sixth of the year. Hasn't allowed a run so far. He has been perfect as he starts with Josh Bell. Plunks him on the five. So the... Runner advances to first. Tying run is up to the plate here. It's Stephen Kwan who's going to ground this one to second. Rockies have a chance to end it on the double play, and they do. Four, six, three, and we have a final. Ten to eight, a slugfest here in Coors Field. It is the Colorado Rockies who win game one of the series. Cleveland will fall to 16 and 11. We expected offense today, and boy, did we get offense. Ten hits for Cleveland, 12 for Colorado. We hit the ball really well today. Multiple home runs. Jose Ramirez went deep. Cattell Barte went deep. Victor Caratini had a very strong game, driving in three runs. And the pitching wasn't horrible after the fifth inning. Savale really struggled. Middleton really struggled. But everybody after that was fairly solid. I don't know why they took Freddy Peralta out after the fourth inning. He was really pitching well. They should have kept him in. But hindsight's 20-20. They won the game, so it doesn't really matter. We're going to simulate through the rest of this Colorado series to wrap up the episode. We would go 1-1, one and one, so we lose that series. But overall, it's been a really good month of April. We're 17-12. and 12. The pitching has been phenomenal. The hitting's been, well, it's been uh, not horrible, I guess. So next episode, we're going to start off the month of May. We're going to take our first look into the minor leagues, get our first look at our draft picks from a year ago. That should be a lot of fun. So make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace out.